At DuPont, worker health and safety is our top priority. Silica dust safety. Respirable crystalline silica dust is generated during the dry cutting, grinding, milling, or drilling of quartz, granite, marble, and some porcelain products. The inhalation of respirable crystalline dust represents a significant potential health risk, a health risk that can lead to a number of chronic and potentially fatal diseases, such as bronchitis, silicosis, chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, collagen vascular diseases, and lung cancer. In general, the body has a number of mechanisms to track and expel foreign particles such as dust. For example, non-respirable particles, particles larger than 10 microns in diameter, are trapped by the mucous membranes of the nose and throat and are chemically broken down and expelled by the body. These dust particles never breach the gas exchange regions of the lungs. Respirable silica is defined as dust that is hazardous when deposited in the gas exchange region of the lungs. Respirable dust is 10 microns in diameter or smaller and can reach the gas exchange region of the lungs unabated, clogging passageways with solid material, ultimately interfering with the gas exchange process. In the gas exchange region of the lungs, the body's ability to remove dust is greatly diminished. Consequently, the body isolates the dust by forming scar tissue around it. Excess scar tissue decreases lung capacity and can make breathing more difficult. This excess scar tissue buildup is called pulmonary fibrosis, and pulmonary fibrosis caused by respirable crystalline dust is called silicosis. Silicosis is a chronic lung disease caused by long-term exposure and is characterized by the formation of silica-containing nodules of scar tissue in the lungs. Simple silicosis, in which the nodules are less than one centimeter in diameter as measured on chest x-ray films, is generally without symptoms, but can slowly progress even in the absence of continued exposure. Complicated silicosis, where the nodules are greater than one centimeter in diameter, is more often associated with disability and can also progress in the absence of continued exposure. Silicosis can be disabling, non-reversible, and sometimes produce fatal lung disease. Health effects can take as long as 20 to 45 years to manifest. In many cases, x-rays have not detected problems for as long as 15 to 20 years after chronic exposure. Each year, millions of workers are exposed to crystalline silica worldwide, which can lead to silicosis. There is no cure for the disease, but it is highly preventable if employers, workers, and government health officials work to reduce exposures. Regulatory best practice indicates that respiratory protection is advised when wet cutting with handheld masonry saws and or grinders indoors, or in an enclosed area, or used outdoors for prolonged periods of time. Please check your local safety regulations for further guidance on personal protective equipment required when cutting, grinding, milling, or drilling quartz, granite, marble, and some porcelain products. There are several types of engineering controls available to reduce employee exposure to respirable crystalline silica dust during fabrication and installation of quartz and porcelain containing materials. One type of engineering control is to use wet fabrication techniques where all cutting, grinding, and shaping is performed using water to trap the dust. In stone fabrication shops, much of the automated and manual equipment is already operated with water. Automated equipment includes bridge saws, linear edgers, CNC's, and water jets. While manual equipment includes grinders, grinders with coring bits, cutters, drill presses, hand routers and profilers, and polishers. However, there are some tasks that have traditionally been performed dry in the granite fabrication industry. These include dry cutting, dry grinding, dry honing, and dry sweeping. In order to minimize the amount of respirable crystalline silica dust in the air, dry cutting, grinding, and sweeping must be eliminated. This can be accomplished by purchasing tools that can be operated using water, by switching to pneumatic tools or electric tools that are designed for wet operation, Respirable crystalline silica dust can be significantly reduced to acceptable safe levels or eliminated completely. In addition, dry sweeping and the use of air hoses to clean surfaces should be avoided when cleaning a shop floor or any shop surface. Dry brooms and air hoses should be replaced with wet brooms or garden hoses equipped with spray nozzles to clean shops. A second type of engineering control is the use of ventilation and filtration systems to selectively collect particles in the respirable range. High efficiency particulate filters, or HEPA filters, are designed to collect respirable particles. When these types of engineering controls are implemented, it is imperative that the filters are replaced according to the manufacturer's prescribed schedule and that the equipment be inspected and maintained according to the manufacturer's specifications. 
Some shops have designed dust collection booths equipped with vacuum systems or waterfalls where operators can cut, grind, and shape product. These systems are very effective, but a few common sense rules apply. 1. The operator should always direct the dust plume into the water curtain or vacuum system. 2. The operator should work upwind of the cutting, grinding, or shaping operation. 3. The operator should work well within the confines of the dust booth. And 4. Any filters used with the vacuum system should be inspected and replaced as recommended by the manufacturer. While not an engineering control, respirators with HEPA filters may also be effective in minimizing exposure to respirable silica dust, where industrial hygiene sampling indicates the potential for overexposure to dust not controlled by effective engineering controls. The employer must develop a comprehensive written program to establish respiratory protection for employees before supplying respirators. While respirators can be effective, there is substantial cost and administrative burden to creating and maintaining a respirator program. Considering all the alternatives to eliminate respirable crystalline silica dust exposure, including protection afforded, the preferred order of containment would be 1. Wet process 2. Dust containment booths, including local dust exhaust ventilation and 3. Respirators The most effective way to minimize respirable silica dust generation in the field is not to produce any dust. This is accomplished by minimizing or eliminating field fabrication through the creation of accurate templates. When field fabrication cannot be avoided, any grinding, cutting, or shaping should be performed wet and or performed outside. If fabrication outside is not possible, the HVAC ventilation system in the vicinity should be sealed off and the fabrication should be performed wet or with local dust collection, such as a handheld vacuum fitted with a HEPA filter. In this video, we have shown many of the fabrication processes that can create respirable crystalline silica dust and have described the health concerns that are created by long-term exposure to this dust. In addition, we have described the various engineering controls that can be implemented by a shop to eliminate the production of respirable silica dust, a major step in creating a safe working environment for operators. As for the job site, we've described the processes that will enable installers of quartz and porcelain filled products to work with the product without creating respirable crystalline silica dust by using wet processes and working outside or by capturing any dust that may be generated by using a local vacuum system with a HEPA filter. Lastly, while all the recommendations provided in this video can be effective in eliminating exposure to respirable silica dust, the ultimate responsibility for worker safety must reside with the worker or employer. DuPont remains committed to our core value of health and safety every single day as we continue to listen to our employees and customers to understand how we can further enhance well-being in our workplaces and beyond.